Hello, a very warm welcome to you as you join us for this week's online worship. Coming to you from Fort William, Kalmali and Kalmanivig, from Durer and Glen Coast at Mundus. It's great to have you with us as we share in our worship. It's been a glorious week here in Loch Aber and we've been enjoying the lovely weather and we come together to share God's love in our worship. We hear some words that come from Psalm 125 as we begin our service today. Those who trust in the Lord are as secure as Mount Zion. They will not be defeated, but will endure forever. Just as the mountains surround and protect Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds and protects his people, both now and forever. Amen. We read some words from Mark's Gospel, from Mark chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre. He tried to keep it secret that he was there, but he couldn't. As usual, the news of his arrival spread fast. Right away, a woman came to him whose little girl was possessed by an evil spirit. She'd heard about Jesus, and now she came and fell at his feet. She begged him to release her child from the demon's control. Since she was a Gentile, born in Syrian Phoenicia, Jesus told her, First I should help my own family, the Jews. It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, That's true, Lord. But even the dogs under the table are given some crumbs from the children's plates. Good answer, he said. And because you have answered so well, I have healed your daughter. And when she arrived home, her little girl was lying quietly in bed and the demon was gone. Amen. Me and my big mouth. Oops, did I say that out loud? I wish I would learn to control my tongue a bit. Those sorts of thoughts are probably common to most of us some of the time. I know that I have all kinds of occasions when I wish I had bitten my tongue and I didn't. The story that we read from Mark's Gospel today looks at first glance like that kind of a story. It has Jesus saying what at first sound seems like some pretty unkind words. A woman comes to him who is from a Syrophoenician background, so she's not from his own Jewish community, and she asks for healing for her daughter. And she's told, shouldn't we feed the children before we feed the dogs under the table? And it sounds like quite a rude response. Until we think a little bit more carefully about what's being said. In this version of the story from Mark, there's a little detail in it that I've missed, I think, just about every other time I've ever read this story. And that's where it takes place. You see, Jesus has gone to Tyre. He's gone north into what we now think of as Lebanon. It's not the lady who's a stranger there. It's Jesus. She's the one who's at home. He's the one who's the visitor. And I think his words are meant to get his disciples to wake up to the problem that they see the world in two narrow terms. They see the message of Jesus and all that they're sharing as only for their own little group of people. People like us, but not for anybody else. Jesus has left that familiar territory and gone north. The lady who has come to him is not from his own race or religion or background, but she has needs just the same. She comes seeking God's help and support, his healing for her daughter just the same. And I think if the disciples were shocked at what Jesus said, they were probably meant to be. They were meant to think, that's not the way Jesus talks, and it isn't. He's not, it's not a slip of the tongue, it's not a mistake. 
He's trying to make the point, that's not a very attractive attitude, is it? We can do better than that. And it's the lady's faith and her persistence that leads him to go along with her wish and to provide healing for her daughter who needs it so much. It's easy for us, isn't it, to get into the habit of thinking that all the good things about our faith, the good things about the gospel, the good things about what Jesus has done are for us and people like us. Other people, well, we're not so worried about them, but that's not what the message of Jesus says. His message is for people in all places, in all backgrounds, in all circumstances. It's sometimes said of the gospel that if it isn't good news for the poor, it isn't good news at all. It's sometimes said that it's supposed to be for all people. So how do we deal with the gospel that's supposed to be good news for people in Afghanistan as well as people in Lochaber? How do we deal with a gospel that's supposed to be good news wherever we are, whatever age we are, whatever our circumstances in life might be? And maybe the first part of the answer to that is don't jump to conclusions. We do it so easily, don't we? We assume we know what we need to know about people when we really don't know anything at all. We judge by appearances or accent or class or colour, or one of any number of things that are really external and don't matter all that much in the great scheme of things. The truth is, whoever you meet, whoever you see, whoever you encounter, you're not going to meet anybody that God doesn't love because he didn't make any of them. You might meet awkward people, challenging people, difficult people, people you disagree with and people you don't get on with. That's part of life but you won't meet somebody that God doesn't love. And therefore you won't meet somebody to whom you're not called to show love in return in whatever way may be appropriate to that relationship. Oops, did I say that out loud? I couldn't tell you how many times I've caught myself on with my mouth open before my brain is engaged. And I don't think I'm alone in that. But we have a God who knows and loves each one of us, whose love is not bounded by the right sort of people from the right sort of place with the right sort of accent and the right sort of religion. And we're called to put that into practice in our lives too. You see, the story happens where Jesus is the stranger. He is the one who needs a welcome but he's also the one who brings God's love into a situation where it was so desperately, desperately needed. Now, shall we come to God in prayer? Let's pray together. Gracious God, we find it so easy simply to open our mouths and speak without thinking. And too often that results in us saying something that's hurtful or damaging or that causes a problem for somebody else. So forgive us for the times when we get that wrong, when we don't think carefully about our words. Help us to use our words in ways that encourage and build people up, strengthen and enable them to be the best that they can be. Lord, we have been sharing the story where Jesus at first seemed to be rejecting the lady who came to him, but in fact, he was welcoming her too and passing to his disciples the lesson that God doesn't judge people by where they come from or what they look like or what their background is. So help us to be the same. Help us to be open and genuine and loving in all our dealings. Lord, we pray today for people who are having to seek those kind of welcomes and new beginnings. We think of people who have been leaving Afghanistan and pray for your blessing on them as they try to make new lives. 
And we pray for your blessing too on those who are left behind, on those who are unable to leave that country and unable to make new starts and who may fear what lies in front. Our prayers are with those who have been affected by bad weather in the United States and by those who have faced challenges of whatever kind. We think of people who struggle from a lack of food security and in particular our thoughts are with those who are suffering from that in parts of East Africa, in Yemen and in other war-torn areas of our world. Lord, we are grateful that you are a God who gives us second chances because so often we, we do get things wrong with our words or our attitudes or our actions. But forgive us and encourage us, we pray. Help us to be the people you would want us to be with the sort of love in our hearts that you have shown to us through your Son. We bring our prayers for all the people known to us to have challenges to face just now. We think about people who've been facing times of ill health and struggling with that. We also seek your blessing on all who've been drawn to life's close or those who are mourning for a loved one who passed away recently. Father, for all of those people, surround them with your love, your peace and your blessing and help us to be the bearers of your good news. And may our words be words of blessing and peace and joy. Hear us as we share the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I don't have a lot of church news to share with you this week, but I do want to remind you that we've got a concert organised for Saturday the 25th of September in Corpac at half past seven when Bruce Davis will be coming and playing for us. Many of you have enjoyed Bruce's music in a number of our online services over the last year and a half. So Bruce is going to come and provide a concert for us. Tickets for that are available at five pounds or if you want to wait and pay in the door, you're welcome to do that, but that'll be six pounds. Anyway, we hope that you'll enjoy uh, that event and that you'll put that in your diary. And we hope that you have a very good and happy and blessed week. And now we finish with the benediction. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.